Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about simplifying, adding, and subtracting complex numbers. Here are the two problems that we'll do. And to make sure we don't take ourselves too seriously, let's think about our fun question. It says, think about the sport in which you have the most skill. Is it the same as the sport you like to watch the most? So complex numbers is most commonly uh, an Algebra 2 topic. And it's the, the time in which you learn about I. So on a standardized test, um, the, the standard for a, the ACT uh, for complex numbers says, you know, something very vague, like can work with the properties of complex numbers. Um, it's possible you could have to simplify, add, subtract. Uh, I also have a video on multiplying and dividing. Multiplying, I know for sure, is one of the specific standards, but the rest is just very vague. So um, here are a few things about complex just as the, the main points. So I is technically a number. It looks like a variable, but it represents the square root of negative one. And the reason for it is... Working with square roots of negatives is very cumbersome, but if you can substitute just an I, stands for imaginary, an I uh, could just be a nice way to work with these numbers in a way where it kind of mirrors working with variables, has the same properties uh, with a few exceptions. So sometimes you need to simplify a very large imaginary number like i to the 56th power um well i mean technically it doesn't simplify down to be a large number it just has a large exponent uh but what i recommend is thinking about uh the difference between i i squared i cubed and i to the fourth so i squared if i is just the square root of negative one, then i squared is just gonna be two of those multiplied. And whenever you square something that's a square root, the square root just drops off. So i squared is equal to negative one. Then i cubed would be the same thing as like i squared times i. Remember i squared is negative one, and then we can just keep i. So that would simplify to be negative i. i to the fourth would be, well, we could use i squared times i squared, and that would be negative one times negative one to equal just one. So for the first one, we have i, then negative one, then negative i, then one that it has sort of a ring to it, i, negative 1, negative i, 1. And then if I did i to the fifth, do I really need to write this out? Let's see if there's some, some sort of a pattern. So i to the fifth could be like i squared times i to the third. Uh, remember, we add the exponents. Uh, 2 plus 3 would be 5 there. Uh, so negative 1 is i squared, and then i to the, the third would be negative i, that would equal positive i. i to the sixth then, uh, we could do say i to the fourth i squared, that would be one times the i squared, which is negative one, that equals negative one. So after the fourth exponent, these start to repeat. So we have i, negative one, negative i, one i negative one then what's next negative i one and that will repeat all the way until infinity in that same pattern kind of similar to a clock how a clock works all right so i to the 56th power what we're trying to figure out is would that be the i the negative one the negative i or the one and what we're going to do is a nice shortcut, which is you take the 56, 
you cut it in fourths or, you know, divide by four. And 56 is actually divisible by four. So you end up getting a positive, uh, not a positive, um, a whole number, 14. Um, but if we didn't, let's say we got 14.25. If it was a 0.25, it would be this first case. If it was a 0.5 as our answer, that means like two I's are left over as sort of a remainder, then you'd have this negative one as our answer. I to the third is the 0.75. If you ever have a 0.75, it would be I to the third or negative I is your answer. And then I to the fourth would be like the whole uh, number. So in this case, it's 14 which tells me that this is the i to the fourth case, and i to the fourth simplifies down to one. So one i to the 56 power is equal to one. Now the second problem here is actually a little easier. You're just simplifying or uh, combining like terms uh, with, with i and with constants. Um, I think you should know how to add and subtract, so I chose the problem that's adding and subtracting together. So we have negative three plus two i. I'm just gonna drop the parentheses if I don't need them. When you're adding, you don't even need them. So I'm gonna do plus two minus four i. But then if I need to subtract this entire uh, six plus four i, then we must distribute this negative or in other words subtract the six and the four i so we'll have minus six and then minus four i now a note on complex numbers they are always in the form a plus b i where basically a is the real number and then the b i is the imaginary part to that full number so um we just need to have our answer in that a plus b i format. And remember, i secretly, it's not a variable, it's a number, but the i replaces that square root negative one. So just makes it a lot easier to work with when the i is subbed in rather than working with all square roots here and of negative numbers. So the negative three, the two, and the six, if I add those together, I would get zero. Okay, so... Once again, I am combining like terms. I just want to add um, those together. Oh, I'm sorry. Negative three plus two is negative one plus six or minus six is negative seven. I, my fault. Uh, so negative seven and then two I minus four I is negative two. I minus four I is negative six I. So there we have an answer. And it's in the A plus B I format. So we're good. So, uh, you know, just I think so simplifying like the first one and then um, adding and subtracting like the second one, this is great practice so that you cover your bases in case you are asked something related to any of this information. And I think it's also good to practice. So here are two pra practice problems that are very similar. Think about for that first one, uh, would you get a 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, or a whole number uh, as your answer? And that will give you a hint about which is which. Why don't you pause the video, work on these, and then I'll reveal the answers. All right, answers are here. So for the first one, we have negative i. That is, you would end up getting a 0 0.75 because 247 divided by 4 is 61.75. Because it's a 0.75, it's the third case, which simplifies to that negative i. Then the second problem uh, is in the form a plus b i. We have 5 minus 5 i as our answer. All right, a quote to keep you going. One of the best ways to make other people happy is to be happy yourself. So I hope this video helped you in some way, and I would love to see the answer to your fun question in the comments. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with videos. Thank you.